Hello and good evening. It's uh, Thursday, uh, April 4th, 2024. And I'm Michael, KB9VBR. And I'm Joe, KD9CGX. And you are guaranteed free. No <laughs> April Fools tonight. <laughs> no fooling around today. There might be a couple just of two, fools. Just two fools. Yep. <laughs> two fools here, but no no fooling. It's <laughs> We're done with that. Thanks, everybody, for joining us for uh, your questions answered. And we'll try to get to as many, you know, if you've got ham radio questions, we might have ham radio answers. At least we I hope we drop them into the chat. We'll try to get to as many as we can uh, this evening you know, over the next, you know, say about hour and a half that we are here. So mm -hmm. um, people are starting to file into the, into the room this already. Cause I see some, uh, bright and shiny faces in the in the chat here our buddy randall from texas um always good for a cuso when you're on a out at a park so mm -hmm. uh mike from across the river uh shane from across the state mike's always good for a cuso <laughs> if you stop it at home depot during the week <laughs> there you go got to get there before 2 p.m though <laughs> yeah that's a little too early for me <laughs> Uh, let's see, we got, um, you know, Mike was asking if we got the email I he sent me and I, or Matt was asking, uh, from Stoughton was asking if we got the email and yes, I did. So we're going to be talking about that. We got a bunch of coming events, coming attractions. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, greetings from, uh, Maryland. I get to, I think my wife's got a t-shirt that says I got crabs in Maryland. So. Uh. <laughs> I've never been to Maryland, but I have had crabs. God, I, you just left it wide open. I had to say it. Yeah. I have eaten crab. Okay, you know. <laughs> oh, I tell you. Well, you know, it's yeah, it's like volleyball. So like you've got to, you know, it's, someone's got a set and someone's got a spike. So, yeah, yeah, and I'm definitely a spiker. <laughs> even if it's low hanging fruit i'm gonna spike it yeah reed from west virginia i read i hope everybody's okay down there um you had some pretty nasty weather roll through the last couple days so um let's see dan uh dave from the other side of town hey, going hey. to the eclipse and uh uh, like it's, the Mitsubishi uh, Eclipse? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm not traveling for the Eclipse. I know a couple people that are, but um, yeah, we'll oh. talk about we'll talk about the Eclipse tonight, yeah. and um, uh, we'll see what's up. Um, hopefully, hopefully it's going It's it, we're, they're talking rain on Monday, so I it's, it's might not be um, too. Um, well, we're really out of the out of the path, so we're not going to see much to begin with. Yeah, about eighty percent. So, are we at eighty here in Wisconsin? Uh, uh, yeah, seventy-five, eighty. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe I'll you know at least try to stick my head out the window and see what's going on. Oh, actually, no, I take that back. I'll be in Madison all day for a conference. So. Oh. You might even get eighty eighty-two percent there. Ooh, 82%. <laughs> Make contact with anyone in Corbett, Oregon. That's a good question. I know I've 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 talked to people in Oregon, but I'm not sure where Corbett is. So I'll have to look that up yep. if it's if I've if I've talked to anybody in that neck of the woods. That I mean I don't have too many Oregon contacts to begin with, so yeah. I don't know. Buddy Brett. Hey uh, Brent. Brent and, uh, and we got a lot of people here, so Oh, we got a testimonial. Oh, yeah, hey, look at that. that. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, uh, <clears throat> Orlando to St. Augustine. That's a good, that's pretty good. I know Florida's pretty, Florida's pretty flat. So you, you got that yep. working for you. But, man, you'll, you'll cover half the state at 30 feet. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see pictures where it didn't happen. <laughs> Oh, yeah. If you have to have crabs, this is yeah. where to get them. <laughs> We're pretty crabby. At least my wife says I'm pretty crabby sometimes. I don't know. Here's somebody's hidden a Carbondale for the eclipse. Oh, so my God. Carbondale. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> I knew yeah, I knew a fraternity he... down there was that drove six hours just to steal a, <laughs> steal a door from the other fraternity's <laughs> house. You guys in Carbondale are something else. I tell you that. <laughs> All right, yeah. Brett says uh, fifty people in the chat. We're all we're yeah we're we're pushing sixty too. So um, oh, hit that hit that like button. The, so. I don't have the um, <laughs> full pledge stuff as Michael has, so I don't know how many people are in here. I don't know. Uh, Ryan's asking a question. Has anyone here used the HRD Industries and Fed Half Wave antennas? Um, it's um, that is the one that's made by. Oh, what's um, I'm trying to. Th it's called since W9 FFF, a ham radio dude. Uh, okay. I think his name is is Sean, and um, he sent me one um, about a week or so ago, and um, I've got it in my pile of stuff to do. It's 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 probably the next video uh product review that i got queued up but it's going to be maybe one or two weeks before it shows okay so it's um it's uh, yeah look for that um it's uh i i looked you know the the parts kit was is is pretty nice he's got a good good selection of parts you know for the okay, for the so inside half one you make yourself okay. it's one you make yourself it's got um it, it uses a little bit different um a ferrite to toroid than what the others use it's it's uh it's not bigger, you know, the diameter isn't any bigger, but it's thicker. So mm -hmm. okay. it should, it should work, you know, a little better for uh, power handling, um, saturation, things like that. Mm -hmm. And he uses uh, Kevlar wire for the uh, radiating element. So, okay. You know, in, in reality, this is, you know, my personal opinion, all these NFED halfway antennas, they all work the same, right? They do absolutely. They're all pretty much going to do the same. Like the question yeah. is: Is it durable? Can you get it up in the air fast? Is it going to hold up if you're putting it upside permanently, or versus mm -hmm. you know go, taking it up and down doing portas stuff? That's really what it comes down to. Um, feds and feds and NFEDs, yeah. You know, it's you. There's people that say, well, one's better. You know, you know, based on on what they're using for the toroid material. You know, is it a is it the 14-2 crossover wrap or is it the yeah. auto trans yeah. transformer wrap? You know, it's, you know, we're talking efficiency. We're talking, you know, maybe one or 2% difference. It's marginal. You know, the differences are marginal. You're not, uh, between, you're never going to notice a difference at that. At between that these, rate. yeah, between these variations. So it's, yeah. yeah, you know, I always, yeah, pick it, pick one according to, you know, fit and feel. Um, mm -hmm. So. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. as long as it can handle 100 watts, if you're running 100 watts and you can get it up the air in a reasonable amount of time, it should. There work, you go. Right. There you go. Yeah, and you know, and, and then is it going to break? If you're going to leave it outside permanently, is it going to last a week or is it going to last 10 years? That's the other thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Is it portable? Is it permanent? Yeah. There's all of these mm -hmm. things, and that's those so. are things. So. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, e, ADB 135. We got the KM4 ACK kit. Uh, and it works fantastic. That's a nice kit. I've I've seen his, and uh, I haven't built it yet, but um, um, but that's a yeah, that's a that's a good one. Um, yeah, uh, but of course, uh, Bill says people get misled on how good an antenna is. <laughs> Bad conditions make all the difference. <laughs> right, you use one antenna one day when you know the solar the solar index is like two hundred, the next mm -hmm. day it's five. Oh, the antenna doesn't work. Uh, baloney. <laughs> you almost got to put them neck and neck and just switch between one and two at the same time and see if anyone yeah, else. Propagation. Propagation does make a difference. Right. <laughs> Our buddy 45 is in the path of totality, so he can just step outside. That's a, that's awesome. That, that I'd love to be um, you know, on the ground for that. But 45, um, just remember when you step outside, please be wearing clothes. <laughs> No one wants to see a full moon on the eclipse. Yep, yep. Oh, oh, oh come on, come on. Oh, man. Or I, the I, dark I, side of the moon, if you know what I mean. She's Louis. The lunatic is on the grass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's going to do oh, it. Really? Oh, I love it. Oh, why? <laughs> Oh, he didn't even try. That wasn't even what he wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> Loop 
it was set to loop. <laughs> Uh, we're loopy tonight. We are loopy. <laughs> Another our, our buddy from Toledo is also in, also in the path of totality. So it's, uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, I want to. So I think I, I, we were talking about the last time this happened. It must have been in 2017. 2017. Yeah, it was yeah. in the summer. Because I remember I was working on a job site, and we had a couple of iron workers there with welding masks. And he, one of the guys left us a welding mask. We could all take up and take a look at it. And we were only at like 50 or maybe 55% that week, that day, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, but you could still clearly see the whole, you know, yep. partial eclipse and everything. Um, so if you know a welder, that's your that's your best mm -hmm. bet right there. There you go. I was in Menards a couple of few weeks ago, and they were selling eclipse glasses. So it's... Oh, uh, I'm sure. I mean, anything to make yeah. a buck in Menards. Anything to make a money. buck. That's right. Save big money. Plus eleven percent. So. Oh yeah. So you got eleven percent back. So you can buy more, more copper too. <laughs> All right. Um, um, you know. You know. Since we're talking about the eclipse, why don't we just? Yeah. Why don't we just keep rolling with it? So. Um, yeah. There you uh, go. Brent's asking: Is there going to be a, a path of strong eighty meter propagation along the eclipse? And that is a really good question. That's and, that's the going theory on it. Mm -hmm. So I think in the 2017 there was a um, there was a study and it was kind of a loosely organized study. Mm -hmm. A bunch of hams got together and they did a QSO party during the eclipse. Now yep. the anecdotal evidence is that there was a strong F layer that developed over the the point of the at the peak time there and that there was 40 and 80 meter propagation the mm -hmm. land went long during those that time of um the, whatever you call it the um the totality totality yeah. thank you yeah thank you. but it doesn't last very long no so if you're in that range if you're in the if you're in the area of totality um uh, it's almost like a gray line right you know how gray line is really weird. You know, you could be working east to west and all of a sudden the gray line comes in, you start working north and south. You start hitting mm -hmm. Japan and you start hit, hitting um um uh, like South America on 10 yep. meters. So this is kind of the same thing, but it's gonna be very quick, probably only 20 or 30 minutes. So my my suggestion to you guys is is get out there on 40 and 80 meters and start calling CQ and see what happens. There you go. So and uh, let's pull this up here because there is going to be a um, yeah we, we, uh, a QSO party. Um, Hamsai dot uh, org is hosting a uh, eclipse QSO party. Let me see if mm -hmm. I can find their if they've got any any information on it. Um, Festivals of Eclipse Iosophernic Science. Ooh, that's yeah. a bad name for QSO party. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's the a solar dig right there. <laughs> yeah, the solar eclipse QSO party is going to be on. Well, oh, don't they say anything? Oh, they got previous dates, but they don't have anything for this current one. So okay, well, I would have. Who knows? Yeah. Is there an N3FJP contest log for this? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just more of a, yeah, it's uh yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll put the link in the, in the chat there. If anybody wants to take go. a look at it and um, yeah, check it out. It's um, uh, should be a lot of, yeah, it's, it looks like it should be a lot of fun. Um, and they did this back in 2017. I know I was on, on during the 2017 eclipse, I was on the um, 40 meter band a little bit. And you mm -hmm. could even, you know, where we were just 75% or so, you could you could tell on on 40, you know, it was starting to go long as mm -hmm. as things kind of progressed in during the during the event and then it, yeah. and then it, it contracted again. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, unfortunately, like I said, I'm going to be out of town, but uh, let us know how it goes. Yeah. So if anybody's doing it, yeah, if anybody's doing anything, um, a special or whatnot, yeah, we'd love to, we'd love to hear it. So mm -hmm. that's um, kind of, it's just taking a broad swath through the, through the United States. So it's going to be, it, it's going to be neat. We're, we're, they're talking rain for us. 
<laughs> of course. Of well, course. We, it was dry and warm December, January, February. March and April, snow, snow, snow. Rain, rain, rain. Yeah. So it's been it's been crazy. It's been pretty crazy. So yeah, I think a week ago, Monday, we had eleven inches of snow. Yeah. We just got dumped on here in Wausau. The next day it was all melted. It was all melted because the next day it rained all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it just got rid of it all. And then it and then we had a nice warm day and now it's 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 gone and then uh two days ago we had another we were supposed to get six inches but things were warm enough that nothing it was melting right away so yeah, we probably yeah. i think we only got about three or four if that stuck yeah and now it's and now that's disappearing and um it's gonna rain this weekend Perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. best weekend ever <laughs> Cliff says N9S is doing a special event from Sam Dale Lake in Southern Illinois on the 7th and 8th. Um, Southern Illinois is ground zero. So it's yeah, um, Carbondale right on that neck of the woods there. Yeah. So that should be, um, should be a good one. So you might want to look yeah. up the, yeah, I don't know if I can find N9, N9S special event. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's going to pull pull it up or not. Um, all these are all oh, ancient. 2022, yeah, that's been updated. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. no, I think you got to go back. And look, oh, uh, yeah, if you look at the uh, top there, yeah, it's way off. Um, oh, your dues at work right here. Yeah, <laughs> I think they need to. Oh, oh, end date. You gotta, yeah, you got to change the end dates. Or... April. There we go. Change your start okay. date to there. No, it's the last one is on 2023. Oh. I don't think it's been updated there. So forget that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should have paid your dues. Yeah, I, I actually I am up for renewal, so I gotta oh. I gotta take care of that. <laughs> you mean you mean they aren't subsidizing it because you're doing something next month for them? No, they're not doing that. So it's mm -hmm. uh... <laughs> Is there something you want to share with us later, Michael? We'll talk about that on coming events. So oh, it's oh uh... yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys want to eyeball you, so you're in luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll be at yeah, we'll be coming next month. We'll be at Hamvention, and I'm sure on that live stream yeah. we'll talk about all about it. So it's uh, oh boy. So I'll check that out. So all right, um, okay. It's um, I don't know if anybody else has got any other eclipse questions, but um, that's that's about all I know about it. Um, yeah, we pretty much uh, passed <laughs> that one up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, just pull this down here, and uh, I did have a couple of questions here, and um, you know, we were talking about um, NFIT half wave antennas, and forty five asks, um, if I take an NFIT half wave currently cut for forty meters, and change it to a linked NFIT half wave for seventeen and twelve meters, will the forty nine to one unin still work properly? That is. Uh, that's a great question, and um, okay, so this, I think you know the simple answer should be yes. Yeah, yeah. Because... I, mean, I, I mean, realistically, you could make an NFED halfway for every band above forty and link them together. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And but then, then but the NFED halfway in itself should be tunable on other bands. So why would you want to do it? Well, the, the advantage, well, we'll talk about that. I mean, yeah. the advantages of, you know, say you've got an NFED halfway for the 40 meter band mm -hmm. and then, and then you make a link or something so that you can turn it or, or you remove part of it so that you can mm -hmm. turn it into a 20 meter NFED half wave. Yeah. The, it should be, it's most efficient at the fundamental frequency. It should um, be. Yeah. It should they're, be. Yeah. They're not, they're not necessarily, well, 
Well, the 49 to one on on there, there was a lot lack of efficiency to begin <laughs> with. <laughs> so it's it takes a fair amount of power to get the you know for that transformer there. That's mm -hmm. the issue on that. So that's one, you know, it, 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 then there's 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 companies, you know, like Pactena, you know, they have a they have a you know, they they do a uh, 20 meter infit half wave and a 40 meter infit half wave where you can get the 20 meter with the 40 meter extensions. So um, you yeah. know, you got you, you you got sort of that kid thing. Well, the chameleon makes their forty meter infit half wave with an eighty meter extension on it, which yeah. is a, is is a monster. So you've got those options there, but just think about putting. You know, it's um so an infit half wave without a tuner works on 40, 20, 15, and ten meters. Mm -hmm. If you put a link on seventeen meters, you should be able to pop that link, and now. You know, it's like kind of like a, you know, it's kind of like an overdrive yeah. on a transmission. So yeah. now it's now we're now we're we should you should be yeah. no tune on seventeen and twelve meters. Yeah, uh, seventeen and twelve. Well, maybe not. No, I because they're not multiples, so you they're got not to multiples have to for twelve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's not a terrible idea. Forty-five auto. Um, why don't you go try that? I, I want to see how that works. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not being facetious on that. I That's not a terrible idea because then yeah. you really do have all bands 40 up. Yeah, yeah. So that's not a terrible idea. I would like to see how that works out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure someone's done this before because there, no, there are no new antennas. But no. that's, that's an interesting concept. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 45, you know, follow up. The infit half wave is the backup, so he wants to have a uh, <laughs> get get something for the work bands, um, oh. so that you don't have to, you know to, for contest right. days. Right. The only thing you don't have is thirty. Mm hmm. So. Well, then you'd have to almost go with the non-resonant antenna, and then and then use the tuner, or right. you know, or use use a tuner with uh with your infit half wave. Yeah. And even even with a. Uh, it, 30 is the band that 30 and 60 are the two bands that absolutely nothing works with it. Mm -hmm. Right. There's no other antenna. You got to almost have a separate 30 meter antenna and a separate 60 meter antenna. They, it just doesn't, they don't, they're odd multiples. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. So, yeah, because, well, yeah, yeah. 60 meters is around, is, is roughly 5.5 megahertz. Yeah. And um which would mean eleven thirty megahertz. meters is, is ten is 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 just about ten point one megahertz. So yeah. yeah, they're gonna yeah, they just they just don't line up at all. No, they so. don't. It's it's that's uh yeah. And to uh Spexies, uh, uh nope, you can put it on seventeen. <laughs> don't put it on seventeen. To see uh contrary to popular belief. <laughs> you can put it to your heart's content on seventeen. In fact, if there's a contest going on, put it on seventeen. There was oh man last weekend was it last weekend, uh, C, uh, CQ magazines um, uh, worldwide DX uh, is it world no which one, which one was it the the big the big DX contest from CQ magazine was oh, last yeah. weekend and um, man seventeen was hopping like you wouldn't believe everybody was on seventeen meters <laughs> and that's another thing too go test two antennas one a week before a contest to one the day of a contest tell me which one works better. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's five nine on a contest weekend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, you know, talking about three uh, random wire for the thirty and the sixty meter bands. Absolutely, um, that's that's the way. That's the you way to do to, it. So. You would have to find for a random wire. You would have to find a length that's not a multiple of a quarter wavelength on both of those. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that that's going to take some math, and I don't. Well, math is not my strong suit. There's there's people that if you you look online and somebody's written a little uh, program to do all the calculations, and it gives you the um the where where you can put your you know uh, how long your wire can be you know based on what bands you want. So right. I think my I think my seventy one footer. I mean, I've used that on thirty meters plenty of times. So, yes. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh yeah. I'm sure there, I'm sure there's a spreadsheet formula that you can just punch it in. It'll give you a yeah, yeah. harmonic. 
Yeah, let's see. Yeah, you know, yeah, the homebrew NFIT half wave tunes 40, 20, 17, 15, and 10 with a tuner. Yeah, it does. So, and and the only reason why you wouldn't want, you know, you'd want to put the link in there is just to eliminate, you know, having to use, a, you know, a, a right. tuner it's or a gonna match be, or it, like Right, it's going to be resident on 17 and 12. You put the links mm -hmm. in or whatever links you put in. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. Yeah, and it's, I think somebody said here it's uh, yeah, <laughs> we had a lot of yeah. This is I, my comments are going so fast, I can't I can't catch them, catch them all of them. Scout says that oh, adding, no. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Another thing about adding the link is that you can tune it for a specific frequency and not be where and, and not wherever the harmonic lands you, and that's right. that not another another good consideration. No, and I, I think that's why. You know, Pac Tenna does what they do with their um, 2040 uh, linked infit half waves. Is is that uh, with that that link? Right. You've, you've got you've got the, for those two bands. You've got the best of best uh, uh, performance already. You know, right. you're not. You're well, not, I mean, not... So it just it just goes to show you. So we think, for example, um, if you're running CW, <laughs> these the harmonics work a lot better for you because what's the CW portion of band seven for 40 meters, seven to seven point one. Well, mm -hmm. that's going to translate to 14 to 14.2, which is well within the band. But if you look at what the um, phone se segment is, phone segment really starts about 7,200, which puts yep. you at 14.4 on the first harmonic, or that would be 21.6 on the third harmonic. So both of those are going to be outside of outside of the band. Right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It works better for CW, but it doesn't work very good for phone. So if you're a phone operator, the links might definitely be a better thing to do. Yeah, we, you know, it's a funny story. A couple of months ago, when we uh, Dave and I did the Minnesota QSO party, we were using his NFED half wave antenna, and he's got it. He's got it set up for the bottom of the bands because he's mostly CW. Yeah, and yeah, so, but then. I was going to be predominantly phone that weekend using the antenna. So, you know, he's, he's trying to, you know, take up a little bit of the, the, the wire to, to sort of, so we could try to move the, um, the resonant point a little bit up the band. Well, we did good with 40 meters, getting it up about halfway. But then what happened with the harmonics, the 20 was decent. And then the 15 starts getting out of band. And then the, <laughs> The ten is 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 just way off, way off yeah. in in in, in the yeah. space. So, yeah. And how many contacts did you make that weekend, Michael? You know, I was on, I was practically on twenty meters the whole day. So yeah. <laughs> it didn't. You guys you know, made those... a bajillion contacts in like mm -hmm. eight and six hours. So I whatever yeah. you did worked just fine. <laughs> those other bands didn't matter. Those those higher bands didn't matter so much. No. <laughs> So holy smokes! So yeah, that was good. So <laughs> yeah, you can can tune an antenna, but you can't tune a fish. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh -huh. I mean, I've seen some tuners that say they can. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that after the break. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> tuning fish. So yeah, uh, which is you know we're at the bottom of the hour here, and um, before we get in get on to the rest of the stuff here, uh, just want to kind of. Uh, recognize a few people, and that's that's our patrons, the 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 people that help keep everything moving on this this crazy train of of ham radio Q and A. Uh, we got a bunch of new members join us in the last month, so uh, right. welcome, yeah, welcome everybody on board on our supporter whoa, level. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Hold on here, <laughs> who's Scott Schobel? <laughs> Really? You tell me. You tell me. I don't me. know. I don't know with Scott. I mean, <laughs> there ain't a lot of us around here. Scott, you're gonna have to hit me up. I need to know where you're at. And what yeah, the hell you do? But we need to do like a 23 and Me or something. Um, wow, it's your doppelganger. Okay. Either <laughs> just that like... or that's just a, that's just a screen handle or something. Well, I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> but we got we got <laughs> we got Rick and Chuck and Paul on the supporter level. Scott, you know it's uh, <laughs> Scott. My... Mopic Is there something I don't know? <laughs> Hector and Daryl. So thank you, everybody. Well, you know, you got that, but on on the um, you know, on our producer level, we've I've got um, of course, 
Alex, Rand, Ken, Brian, Ron, Joel, Cliff, Mark. Hey, no hey, relation. Exactly. See, see where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> no relation, Larry. No relation. <laughs> John, Michael, Lyle, Michael, Andy, Bill, Dave, W4PHO, and our newest associate producer, Josh. Uh, thanks for joining us into the uh, into the clan here. It's uh, greatly appreciated. Um, because as a uh, patron, you get um, uh, access to bonus content and other features over on uh, over on the Patreon page. Um, when I do these videos, a lot of times I've got two hours worth of parks on the air footage that I've recorded. Oh. And um, you can watch all of that. <laughs> so, so thank you so oh, much. <laughs> so give me a little bit, a little bit of applause. And, um, wow, that was way too long there. <laughs> that's still, that's yeah. still the laughter from uh, I Love Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, laugh tracks were brand new back then. So, yeah. So. If anyone knows, they can't they canned all the laugh tracks from I Love Lucy because Lucy was filmed before a live studio audience, and they just <laughs> reused them for forty years. <laughs> so if you're listening, if you watched um, sitcoms in the '80s, it was still uh -huh. the same laugh track or applause from the audience from I Love Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's if you've ever watched like. Um... Episodes of Seinfeld without the laugh track, it's just painful because you need the you need the laugh track in order to get the jokes, no one, I guess. No one to laugh, yeah. No, no one to laugh. Joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So and now a word from our sponsor. KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com. All right. So Dr. John Ethan says, hey, all, thanks for all the content. Been diving headfirst into the hobby, and your videos are awesome. So that's great to hear. <laughs> so I'm uh, glad you're finding them useful, and um, they help you along the way on your, your brand-new amateur radio journey. Yep. And um, hey, we're hey, I got a super villain last, do you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're the great and I pinky <laughs> tonight. We take over the world. <laughs> Narf. Narf. <laughs> oh, <laughs> are you pondering what I'm pondering? Pinky? Yeah, <laughs> oh my lord, I love that. That is a great yeah. show. So, you know, it's um, uh. Before, while we were getting things set up here uh, today, we were talking a little bit about um, QSO cards, and yeah. I got a big stack here, and um, I think we'll just, um, I'll share a few of them, uh, and then we'll kind of, uh, let's see, I'm going to move, I'm going to move you to the side there so you can kind of. And, and bigging yourself? I'm bigging myself so you can kind of see the cards, because we go. got, a, you know, we got a lot of, uh, these are from the last couple of months, um, W. 8YX, that's a beautiful, that's beauty. University of Cincinnati Amateur Radio Club. That's a, that's a pretty cool one. Nice. Uh, Oklahoma, uh, Southern California. Are those Joshua trees? Those are, uh, yes. San Bernardino County. Um, yeah, that's what those look like. KC3, SBT, um, Chesapeake Bay, Maryland. Nice. Another Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Uh, New Berlin, Berlin, got to say it right. New Berlin, New Berlin, uh, not, Berlin. not Berlin, not, not Berlin. Berlin, Berlin, it's Berlin, Berlin. <laughs> Only in Wisconsin, folks. <laughs> Those look like tomatillos or something, but um, I kind of like this one. Uh, N seven hex has got the got the couple there listening to the radio. That's kind of neat. I like that. That's so, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, looks like the frozen tundra. Uh, FIQ with K3 KKI, a nice map of Pennsylvania. This one's kind of cool. 
uh, New Jersey, K E two N J, New Jersey, the New Jersey, Jersey. Devils, the Jersey Devils, <laughs> Doisy. Nope, W O R V sent me two. Oh, hey, you got a two, two for set, there. Two, two different contacts. E M M from Clarksville, Tennessee. Ooh, Lighthouse. Which Lighthouse is this? Portsmouth Harbor, um, KC1. So that was Dover, New Hampshire. Okay. Uh, Texas. Yeah, a lot of flags on these. Yeah, KR1. So this kind of brings us to, you know, Joe, you are, you made a contact. <laughs> I need a contact. Yay! I know, I know. <laughs> well, I worked the Wisconsin QSO party a couple weekends ago, and um, W A eight M E A. Try to get that there without the. Uh, there we go. Glare. Uh, so I, I, you know, this is uh, you know kind of your standard card, right? This is kind of old school, right? Mm -hmm, On mm -hmm. the back of it, he writes, "Thanks for Marathon County," which means. He's a county hunter. Counter, county hunter, yeah. Okay, so like, there's not a lot of county hunters left out there. So if he was saying Marathon County on here, then I kind of have to because these guys don't like, you know, QSL electronically. Um, yeah. Unless, unless um, Bill, I confirm receipt. I can confirm, but, I, you know, I don't think if you take this in, you know, to get your points <laughs> over, that the video is going to count. Screenshot. So, <laughs> I'm gonna have to make a card, guys. Is what it comes down to. I can't put it off anymore. So I have two options, two pictures. Uh, Michael, would you do the second picture I sent you first? The oh yes, scenery. we'll pull these. Well, the second picture first. The sec yeah, the beautiful scene. The beautiful. So yeah, Joe's looking for a um, a picture for his card. Backdrop. So yeah. backdrop. So we've got this choice. I got this. This is from, I can't remember the name of the provincial park, but this is up in uh, in uh, northern Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, one of the probably most beautiful places I've been on the earth. Um, absolutely stunning. And I thought this is probably the best picture of all of them. And I just put my call sign on there and then we can do all the stuff on the back, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. But does it really fit me, guys? Is that really a beautiful? Am I really a beautiful person in touch with nature and everything that God has created, <laughs> or am I, Michael? Am I just a <laughs> fat bulldog laying in bed? Laying in bed. <laughs> this is my girl Juno. Hmm. Just give me that look, like it's it's not it's not time to get up yet, Dad. No, you know, you no, yeah. Stay in bed. not yet. <laughs> so, you tell me, guys. Could I, um, should I go with the beautiful scene or the my bulldog or my, or the, my bulldog? Or yeah. the bulldog. You guys beautiful let scene. me know which one I should do, and I'm going to make it up. And I talk to Michael. He's going to point me in the right direction on how to get these printed up. We're going to make this happen. Yeah. So I don't know how we can do a, I don't, I don't think we can do a poll. So, or can we do a poll? Uh, um, so I got one vote for bulldog. Start a poll. Okay, here we go. Oh, here we um, go. What should we use? Um, we got three for the bulldog, one for the beautiful scene. Okay. Beautiful scene. Bulldog. Okay, start poll. All right, we got the poll going. All right, so, guys, let me know. We'll, we'll keep it open for a little while. We'll keep it we'll open for a little while. And um, yeah, there's the bulldog, and there's the beautiful sea. Oh, there so. we go. That's, <laughs> let's be real, bulldog. I, bulldog. I'll <laughs> have to see if I can get some glabber shots of her. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> that is a glamour shot. She looks so sad. She, she really does. does. She, she does. Just, that's what she wants to be. Is she just wants to be in my bed 24-7. Except yeah. when she needs to eat or pee. <laughs> Especially when she needs to pee. Because if she pees in my bed, I get pretty mad. Yeah, uh, when I say the dog is beautiful, that's because you only she, see the dog's face. Hey, hey. She <laughs> is down 20 pounds, Michael. Wow. She is svelte. 
right? A human can't lose that much weight unless they have what's that? We go be or whatever. So, you know. Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh Ozempic. Ozempic, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, don't let Michael choose to be a card <laughs> with a red, red with a big oh. W. <laughs> no <laughs> actually, I, uh, I prefer actually a green card with a G. There but we go. Yeah, will you also suffice. Yeah, you're you're as more as long you're as it's more... not a blue M. <laughs> or whatever letter Ohio State uses. No, the Buckeyes. <laughs> I don't know if they even use letters. Ohio State's too stupid. They just have crayons and scratch. Uh, yeah, let's see. It's uh, yeah. Put put Juno in the scene. Oh, she's going to come to Canada. Forced oh. in the front, dog in the back. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a mullet. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> holy smoke. <laughs> yeah, county hunting can take forever. So oh. there's 254 in Texas. And some are, yeah, I think the only, some of those counties, the only way you're going to get them on the air is if somebody drives there and activates them. Yeah, yeah. Our, fr our, our friend Brent, K9MIX, is a silent key. He was a county hunter. <laughs> um, I forget how many he had worked. It was in the several thousand. I thought he had almost all of them, or he had all of them, mm -hmm. and, but it was like on different bands, and I, I don't remember. There was a lot he had. Of course, yeah. he, was a, he was a ham for 60 years. It's like so, is it about 4,000 counties, I think, in the U.S.? Yeah. So, yeah. It's quite the feat to work them all. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it certainly is. So, then I think. Um, hey, whoa, we got we got Japan in the house. Uh, hey. Yokohama. So, uh, Konnichiwa. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good morning. So, it's uh, thanks for joining us. I've been I've been practicing. Um, I've been getting. Get, uh, I like to um, say something to the DX stations, especially the European ones. So, I, I, I need I need to practice my like um, goodbyes with them. I don't know if anybody else. Sayonara. Sayonara. No, not yeah. Or or, or hello or greeting. Ciao. I say ch a lot of times I'll just say ciao, because that works. That works really well for most most of the languages: Italian, Spanish, uh, the Romantics, um, French. French is a little bit different. Um, of course, Germans off Wiedersehen. saying I could say I can, I can that can roll <laughs> off my head, or head my 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 mouth, my tongue. Um, especially better if I've been drinking. <laughs> my German, <laughs> my German gets exponentially better in the beer garden. <laughs> Everyone's German gets better in the beer garden. <laughs> That's a scientific fact. <laughs> my high school German just comes back to life. So <laughs> <laughs> your reawakened brain cells that haven't been active in almost forty years. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> so. So I don't know if anybody else does that, but um, that's just just one of those personal touches I've been I've been I've been kind of uh, working on. So. Yep. <laughs> das Madonia. No, no, no. To, yeah, to, to pizza. Das Madonia. I'm gonna I'm gonna need crib notes, a sheet or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you just program them into the radio so you hit a button? <laughs> <laughs> the memories. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say ciao twice for Italy. Three even better. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao, ciao. ciao, ciao, ciao. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Holy smokes. Uh, oh, I mean, you, you could, like, almost put a presentation on that at some big conference for that. I might have to. Yeah. I'm going to write that down. Yeah. Uh, so it's... Uh, you know, we're talking about coming events, and um, I think that's kind of a per uh, while we let the poll run out. Um, I, I've dropped the hint a couple times here. Someone's made it to the big time, <laughs> the biggest stage there is in ham radio. So we'll let the yeah we'll let the poll run out for a couple minutes. Just um, you know, bulldog or or beautiful scene for Joe's QSL <laughs> card. Uh, but, um, yeah, we got some, we got some fun stuff happening. I'll be, of course, um, in May, I'll be at Hamvention and, um, I'm going to be a presenter. So how cool is that? 
Oh, um, I remember Michael when he was just a wee ham, and now he's on the big stage. You know, uh, carrying what, water. What are you I'm, presenting, Michael? I'm carrying. Well, I'm carrying water for the ARRL, I guess. But I'm carrying uh, water. <laughs> Cigars, cigarettes. Uh, so I. I'm part of, I'm part, I'll be part of their contingent, their, their forums. And I'm going to, I'm going to do a presentation on POTA parks on the air. And it's going to be um, kind of like, um, I'm, we're just going to, it's, it's going to be, I'm not really sort of an A to Z or, or, um, or get started with POTA. I want it to be just a little bit more uh, engaging than that, where we're going to kind of talk about, I'm going to talk about the things that I like to do that make my parks on the air activations a success. So it's, um, you know, we know the equipment, you know, we know how, we know how to do set that stuff up. We know what we need, but we need to take it, you know, uh, go from the next level there, all those little hints and kinks and tricks oh. and, 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 and the fun things that sort of just sort of take your, you know, whole hum activation to a activation. So, an active activation. <laughs> so that'll be Friday afternoon. Um, I think it's at four o'clock. It's one of the last ones on Friday. So right, that's really cutting into prime uh, celebration time there, Michael. Yeah, we'll still be good. We'll still yeah. be good. There's plenty of daylight. Uh, campground's only a twenty minute drive from the um, uh, fairgrounds, so it's okay. Yeah, it's not. It's it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt us. <laughs> You'll have Christine; she can drive you around. There we go. There in we in go. the boatmobile. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe they'll give us a maybe they'll give us a golf cart. <laughs> oh, there you go. Hey, did you know you can rent scooters at Hamvention? Oh, of course you can. <laughs> There's nothing more ham sexier than a scooter. <laughs> oh man, oh man, I might have to. That might be my. Um, that might be my assignment. Is Get yourself to... a hover around with a, no. with a 10 meter rip <laughs> on the back. Put a couple of shark six on that. Photog photographing all of the ham sexy scooters I see. Oh so. my lord. <laughs> They'll never let you back. <laughs> oh yeah. So, whoops. Yeah. I dress up like a big old clown, probably. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm halfway there. Well, I mean, uh, he's not going to wear a Michigan shirt. No, no, that's for sure. <laughs> Which I don't know what building I'll be in. Um, so uh, it's uh, it they'll 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 announce it as we get closer to the date. I'm guessing. I, I think the ARL has probably got a has got one of the rooms because they've got they've got their own track of presentations going all weekend. So it's probably going to be their own their own room. So so you know. Um, uh, Joe has been working on here all evening. He's been asked, uh, he wants me to activate Badger Stadium. Camp well, if Randall. You knew what that, if you knew what the actual name for Badger Stadium was, Joe. <laughs> but then again, I don't have enough crayons to spell it for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. 45's got it, and he's a Texan. Yeah. Camp Randall. It's um, It was a Civil War camp encampment that is now the home of the Badger football. So it's a yep. beautiful, oh beautiful downtown Madison, Wisconsin. And Joe, Joe, what team are you, are you cheering on there? I, I just want to know. <laughs> just, just enlighten me here who your hometown favorite is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's um, I'm a, I'm a Badger true and true. So it's, um, yep. there's no, there's no doubt about that. And, on uh, Wisconsin. On Wisconsin. Um, all right. And um, we're talking about events in, in Wisconsin, Madison. Of course, it's um, the week. This coming weekend is the Madison Ham Fest. And uh, my buddy yeah. um, Matt down in uh, Stoughton reminded me about that because the Ham Fest is coming up in eight days, 12 hours, 10 minutes. And... Um, Stoughton, Wisconsin, Saturday, April 13th, 8 till noon, Mant Community Center. And a beautiful, beautiful place. It's a, it's a hockey arena, so they've got plenty of space, always lots of vendors. 
Mm -hmm. uh, good parking. You know, it's um, uh, afterwards you can uh, plenty of restaurants downtown Stoughton. You can you can eat at. So I'll be there. Um, at least I'm planning to be there. Uh, we're going to drive down for the day. Uh, Joe won't be there, of course. That's yeah. next weekend or this weekend? This coming weekend. No, so not no, yeah. No, we, no, the 13th, I won't be there. Next weekend, yeah. Oh no, I definitely have something going on that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. So, yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be doing your your annual trivia thing. Yep, I'll be doing the uh, world's largest trivia contest. So, yep, yep. Fifty four hours of no sleep and a lot of other stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and with that, uh, this but this coming weekend, the fifth and sixth, sixth and seventh is the uh, Missouri CUSO party. There we go. So anybody participating in that? This is a fun one. It's two days. And I've done this one from home here, uh, working work in Missouri stations, because I can hit, usually Missouri is good on 40 meters. It used to be good on 40 meters when the propagation stunk. Um, yeah. Now um, it's solid, 20 meters. I, I can get into Missouri easy on 20 and 40. So that'll be maybe if I stay up late on. Is that say coordinated by the Boeing Employees Amateur Radio Society? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a big Boeing plant in Missouri. So. Yeah, I think in Kansas City. So yeah, are they going to lose my log if I submit it? No, I guess it's okay. in St. Louis. It's oh, it's not going <laughs> to yeah, fall the, right out of the air. The bolts are going to fall. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Computer All malfunction. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so look for that on the air. And um, the third weekend, uh, Brent reminded me. I, I just saw here that um, uh, the third weekend is the support your parks weekend for parks on the oh, air. Oh, okay. That's always fun. And we can um, make a lot of contacts. Yeah, make a lot of contacts, but also the. Um, that weekend is also World Amateur Day. Oh, even better. 18th. Yeah, I think that's I think that's on a Saturday. Um, but um, uh, Rob, I, I oh, saw I there Friday is Friday, April eighteenth. Friday, yeah. yeah. I, I I saw here that Rob uh, VE three is it um, uh, PCP is uh, he's he was reminding. Reminding me um, what we're you know, or asking me what we were going to do for World Re Amateur Radio Day. So it's um, uh, that's a pretty that's a pretty cool event. So there's a lot of stuff going on in April, so uh, to to keep you busy. So all right, well, should we close down the poll? Um, yep. Okay, I'm ready. I am. Um, this is a scientific, um, non. What's the word I'm looking for? Non-binding. Um, you know, we'll, we'll just get the, we'll mm -hmm. shake the dice and see where they lay. Magic eight ball. All right. What do we All got? Right. Here we go. There is the winner. Juno's always here, a winner. Here, here. Here's the winner for the poll. Um, and it's two to one. Two to one. <laughs> God, I wish political elections would go that way. Hold up. Did it show up in our <laughs> chat here? So it's... um. No, it doesn't I show up my No, it doesn't. No, I got I got to look at it on the live stream chat. Okay. 67% bulldog, 32% beautiful scene. All right. So, well, with I'm 40 Juno with... all dialed up. <laughs> um, we're going to go to glamour shots. There we go. And uh we're going to make the best card we can make and <laughs> the first one's going to go out to Bill right here. Bill, all right. It's coming to you. He's gonna... <laughs> right now, someone in uh, someone in Michigan is re is watching this, and he's gonna they're gonna tell Bill, "You were on, you were on." <laughs> magic oh, eight balls, man, magic eight balls. To <laughs> this is points to Juno. <laughs> Answer is fuzzy. Also barks. <laughs> <laughs> also barks. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. well we got. Um, uh, I've been get. I got this one question in on email on grounding, and um, I know that when you know when we talk about grounding, you know we 
it's 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 one of those things that kind of triggers. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I think that will set up Joe. my epilepsy right there. Jeez. <laughs> and um, uh, Ken was asking, I'm wondering what your thoughts are in running an RF ground from the radio to earth when operating portable or mobile. I know it's a lot of folks set up on a table or temporary in a vehicle. No one seems to run a chassis to earth ground. So why is that? Uh, you're, you're waiting for me to answer this, right? <laughs> I can give an answer, but I think that <laughs> do we want to hear? Do we want to hear my answer, or do we want to hear the master electrician? <laughs> well, uh, there's a lot of different things I can channel from here, but the answer is no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I've like I've had heated discussions with people about this. The answer is no. You don't need to do it. So, as an electrical safety. You don't need to run it because your source is a battery, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you were to ground with something, that ground must lead back to the source. Generally, the source is a transformer. If you're like on uh, the mains inside your house, there's a transformer that is grounded. The center point is, is bonded to the ground. And mm -hmm. the, the earth is a high impedance path back to the source, okay? But you're running off a battery. So that's one number one right there. Number two is for lightning protection. Let me tell you, if you're not picking yourself up when you start hearing thunder, you're on your own. And a ground rod ain't going to help you if you get struck by lightning when you're right next to your radio. Yep. Two. When thunder three, rolls, you got to go. So it's... Right. Um, just, just, just go inside. Pick up your radio, yep. go inside. And plus, do you want to actually pull a ground rod back out of the earth while like there's thunder and lightning? No, no, no. Okay. Number three, and that there's like it's for our reference for the antenna. No, 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 no. A counterpoise is not mm -hmm. a ground. Okay. Yeah, correct. A counterpoise is a section of an antenna that lays on the ground, but it is not a ground. Okay. The only time that we ever really bond an antenna or some sort of tower structure to the ground is for lightning protection. And yeah, I said yeah. just a moment ago, if you see lightning, get your, you know, what inside. Disconnect. So, yep. Under no circumstances should you be ground. Do you bond your two meter radio in the car to the ground as you're driving down the road? No. No. The only reason that we really do it at home is one, because eventually at some point in time, we're using 120 volts, either for the radio itself, the power supply or something else. Right. Mm -hmm. We also bond at home because there may be reflected RF that gets back into the system. So but, it gives it a path back to ground. That that's kind of a neat bond, thing. But bonding, bonding isn't grounding. So. Bonding is a little bit of a different thing. And yeah. again, you don't need to bond in the, in the field when you're doing like POTA or something. Okay, guys, um, you know, you could technically, you know, maybe run a bonding jumper between a radio and a tuner, but it's probably not going to make a difference, really. Okay. Um, yeah. We bond for lightning protection at home because yep. uh, setups are permanent, right? Your antenna can get hit outside and lightning can travel in. Um, that does happen. The lightning arresters, like a polyphaser, um, if you have a tower or you're supposed to be setting ground rods at the tower, those are all things that we do. But again, we're not doing that in the field. No. So there's no, no reason to do that. Our club used to always put up a 30-foot 30, 30 tower for field day and then insist that we need to drive ground rods in. And I said, are you ridiculous? Right? Because if it's getting hit by lightning, we're getting the heck out of here. Yeah. And there's been a couple of times we've had to get the heck out of there in a hurry. Okay. Um, so I, in the end, it, no grounding needed while operating outside, like parks on the air or just like camping or anything. Period. Yep. None. Yep. End of discussion. I don't care what you have to say <laughs> about it. Done. <laughs> And thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the vehicle, we talk about you know people kind of mistake grounding and bonding, and in the vehicle, we bond all the metal elements of the vehicle together in order to help facilitate a ground network, mm -hmm. which is not 
an electrical ground, but part of your counterpoise system for your your HF antenna. Right, right. So remember, we go back to um, to AC theory, AC mm-hmm. alternating current, which RF is an alternating current, is that anytime you have an alternating current, you almost automatically get two things. You get inductance and you get capacitance. Mm-hmm. So any two metal objects that are not connected together, there's going to be a capacitance in between them. Okay, so um, hood, your trunk lid, uh, doors, because there's a gap, there's a small gap in between the metal objects and there, there's going to be some capacitance. And that capacitance affects the ground plane of any antenna that you have on yep. a car. Yep. Not a big deal on two meters and 440. Big deal if you run HF. Yes. In so much is that you better get down under your car and actually bond, not ground, but bond your exhaust pipe to the chassis. Because how is your, how is your exhaust pipe connected to the bottom of your car? Big rubber grommets. Yeah. Rubber hangers. So there's a capacitance that builds up in there. So if you take a little bonding, a grounding strap, and <laughs> bond between those two, your mechanic's going to think you're a little crazy, but you're going to be smart because you're going to have a you're going to have a better tuning when you try to take that <laughs> screwdriver antenna and tune to forty and eighty meters. Absolutely, and especially the lower bands. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, you really got to understand b- grounding and bonding and what it does and when you need to do it and when you <laughs> don't need to do it, um, mm-hmm. because there's a lot of baloney out there. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, okay, so KB nine DED is the guy that I actually got a conversation with this once. <laughs> uh, Mike, I love you, but if you tell me to ground run on a porta activation again, I'm gonna say no, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. But but you know, if you're at home, yes, I highly recommend take a little extra time, make sure that you've got a good ground to earth because it may save you one of these days. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, for two hours, no, forget it. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, or a weekend or whatnot. Absolutely. Yeah, even absolutely. a weekend, like you know, yeah, yeah. Again, if you hear a thunder, just unplug it and go back inside the tent. Hmm. So there we go. So all yeah, right, cut, cut that for the video. <laughs> <laughs> Michael and I have these conversations so, afterwards. Like, what are we going to chop up for the video? Yeah, that's one that we're going to cut up. Seacon so. wants to know your trivia team name, oh, so Lord. you got uh, you got a fan. <laughs> so our team name, there, there's two teams that got together. It's uh, Team Diesel and Stop the Rainforest. So a number of years ago, this is our 22nd year playing. Um, so it's T D S T R. And then usually we have something there. And I don't remember what we, TDSTR something. It's always a little risque. Like we always try to push the limits. Um, <laughs> just hold on. I, I got it on the phone here. I, I can't believe oh, I forgot it. <laughs> um, and I got to go to Discord, of course. Of course. So. Uh, Discord, okay. <laughs> So, all right. Okay. So our name is, and someone came up with this real quick. Uh, okay. Yeah. I remember it now. So we're, we're <laughs> superstition is the theme this year for trivia. I don't even know if I can say this on our show, Michael. I'm sorry. Do I have to bleep it? <laughs> It's TDSTR and the mysterious BBC. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> oh my! <laughs> it's not the British Broadcasting Company. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, we're I'm going to hell. Going oh to hell. yeah. yeah. Oh, well, there you we, go. That's our team name this year. We might have to. Yeah, I was. I don't have. I don't have a bleeper. So the mysterious <laughs> the, BBC. The, the mysterious <laughs> BBC. <laughs> Holy smokers! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, since we're talking about questions here, email questions. Um, I got another. I got. A, I got another one here. Globetrotter Mike 
he was talking, uh, asking about batteries. And I get this one a lot, too. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, how, how big of a battery do I need? Because yeah, he likes to run. His, he's got an FT891. Um, you can get a 12-volt, 18-amp-hour lithium battery for $140 Canadian or a 12-volt, 30-amp-hour lithium batteries for $300 Canadian. Yeah, uh, do you think that the 18 amp hour will run the FT891? Um, can I run it full power, or should I go with the bigger battery? Yeah, and um, that is a that is a really good question. And um, you know, it's the the one thing you know, he's and he said he's primarily going to do voice uh, phone work, which is good because uh, phone single sideband mm -hmm. is not a full duty cycle mode. So at the peak. You know, because you don't have a carrier, mm -hmm. you only have one of the two sidebands. So at the peak, you are probably going to only be at 100 watts. You're probably only going to be like at 80 percent of the power level of the of of of, of the transmitter. You know, and, and right. that you can you can kind of you know depending on if you if you're running the processor, the compressor, or whatnot, you can kind of edge that up a little bit more, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um, you're probably going to stay underneath, you know, a full, uh, uh, full, full key down hundred Watts. You're going to FT891 is going to pull 21 amps. Um, that's about, you know, uh, mm -hmm. power output and, and overhead. So with sideband hundred Watts, you're probably going to be pulling, you know, 17, 18 amps, your battery, your 18 amp hour battery, you know, the BMS will, will, will cover that. At but peak. At, at peak. peak. Yeah. yeah. Average, your average duty site, you know, your average power is probably going to be on more on the line of, you know, 10 or eight, you know, eight or 10 amp draw. So you can yeah. probably, so that 18 amp hour battery at hundred Watts is probably going to give you about two hours of life. Um, yeah. You know, give or, give or take. Yeah. I've used 15 hour uh, mm -hmm. lithium uh, iron phosphate and I've gotten probably three hours, you know, depending if you're parking and barking, if you're hunting. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that, that plays a key into it too. Yep. Um, 18 hours. If you just want to go out for an afternoon and make a couple hours of the contacts. Perfect. Yep. Absolutely yep. fine. And that's not going to be a problem. If you're going to do a weekend, I would say, you know, think of something a little bit bigger, either a but, bigger um, battery or a way to charge it. Yeah. Yeah. A 30. I mean, if you can get 30, that's great. Um, I run a 50 now. Um, I ran a 54, uh, winter field day. Mm -hmm. And I never had to charge that all weekend. And I was no. running, um, what was I running? I was, um, you were doing PSK, PSK, yeah, yeah. So that's a that's a full duty cycle, um, mm -hmm. uh, mode, but that 50 lasted all weekend, yeah. So I would say, you know, 18 is great for just voice on for a Saturday afternoon. 50 if you want to do a weekend, 100 of your, you know, Michael Martin's. <laughs> I do. I take my 20 amp hour battery for an afternoon activation and um, I run 50 watts. I could, I'll get about five hours out of it. I'll get about five hours. Um, oh, if, even, even if I run for about two and a half, I bring it home, throw it on the charger. I've only used about 12 amp hours. So. Mm -hmm. So that's I, I that's that's what I what I kind of estimate. When I go out for the weekend, I'll I'll, I'll throw the fifty in the back of the car, then I don't right. worry about because yeah. I'm not going to be charging it up when it's done. <laughs> you know, I I'm, I'm done <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, and I would say if if, if uh, Globe Trotter goes down to seventy five eighty watts, you're really not going to mm -hmm. see much of a difference. No, in, um, in, even to fifty watts, you you I mean you're making two hundred contacts in an afternoon on fifty watts, Michael. Yep. Uh, yep. Which is which is just silly. <laughs> so I mean, you could you don't even need to run seventy five. Run, turn it down to fifty. Double your time on the battery and have fun. You get. I think it. You know, it's because it's it's only a it's it's a three dB difference. So you're not even. That's not even half an S. That's a half an S unit. Right. So you you gain more through battery conservation than you lose in um, power. Output ability, if right. it's yeah, yeah. So. Our output ability is that a scientific term, Michael? It's I don't know. Well, I don't know. Well, you know, it's I don't know what would be the technical term. You know, 
total coverage area, whatever you coverage, want to call it. Um, yeah. um, yeah, duty, duty, duty cycle. So more more <laughs> QSOs per mile. We'll yeah. just say that. Eric there, he crushed a 250 amp hour during a Hawaii QSO party. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, but he, he did, had laptops and everything. He had else the laptops running. running. Yeah. yeah. So when Dave and I did the um, Wisconsin QSO party, and I had the hundred, I had the hundred in the back of the truck mm -hmm. for both of us. Um, we made, you know, he, I don't know how many he made, four hundred contacts. I made about um, seven hundred. He made, you know, he made about three seventy five. We made about seven hundred. We had just over a thousand contacts for that seven hour event. Uh, when I put it back onto the charger, it only needed, it was not, it was at about 40% capacity yet. So I only used about 60% of the battery in that. Jeez, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> and we were running, I was running, I was running 50 watts. I would, mm -hmm. I um, didn't do the full 100 because we were, just because of our proximity and the bandpass filters and all that, we wanted to keep the, yeah. the power down a little bit, so. Yeah. And, you know, they do make these little power monitors that you can put in line with the battery. Uh, they have uh, power poles on both ends, and it'll show you how much power you've used in terms mm -hmm. of amp hours or even watt hours, right? And yeah. I, th I think um, uh, West Mountain sells, West Mountain Radio sells them for uh, like 40 bucks, or you can get the same ones on Amazon with some weird made up name for 20 bucks. For 20 bucks. And I had one right. of those on my battery, but I bumped it. So I lost, you know, oh. <laughs> I lost yeah. everything. But, um, but yeah, yeah so. so definitely for 20 bucks, if you want to see what you're using on your battery on the afternoon, get one of those. That's a get one of those. And then, then you get a, after you use the, one of those battery monitors for a few times, you, you kind of really do get an idea on what your consumption is and you can feel a little bit more comfortable in using the battery to its you know a smaller battery to its fullest potential or how much of a larger battery you're actually actually using and yeah. that's that's probably the best piece of advice i can give somebody is is yeah. that um yeah once you know you know once you know how what you're, you know, how much power you're actually using, then you can sort of budget, you know, yourself into a battery that um, mm -hmm. will will fit that will fit that need. Yeah, so. and get rid of the lead acid batteries. Just oh. at this point in time, guys, yeah. like when we first did, um, when we did National Parks on the Air in 2016. Yes, Michael and I went out with lead acid batteries, hauled those out to the field, uh, just struggled, had to charge them. And mm -hmm. we weren't getting much out of it all. Like these only last batteries are just yeah. stupid, and you can get them on Amazon stupid cheap now. Oh yeah, you know, I mean, I bought this fifty amp hour one on Amazon, and I think it was under a hundred and fifty bucks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so you can get um, not name brand, and you know, it's um, you know, it's some whatever you want to call them from China. Whatever. Yeah, but. They all use the same cells. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. But you know, for a thirty amp hour battery, you're probably only paying fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. I mean, and if you want to start doing parks on the year more than like you know once a year, that's the way to go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. and they hold their charge almost in you know for a, for a stupid long time. Uh -huh. uh, you know, with it's um with a lead acid battery, you can only bring it down to about fifty percent capacity. Uh, the 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 um, lithium iron phosphates, you could go down to 10%. Yep. And the battery monitor will usually cut you off yeah. to, to protect the battery. So it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, and they're, they're not that expensive. I think that EcoWorthy 20 amp hour that I use is definitely, on, it's under 100 bucks. I think it's like 75. Oh, you got your money out of that one. Yeah. You really got your money out of that one. <laughs> Um, yeah, a I, I, hundred bucks, you can get a decent battery and 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. You can get a decent battery for an afternoon. Yep. Um, and there's so much more lighter. Oh I mean, yeah. If you're, hauling, if you're hauling your rig out into the, into the field, try it, you know, it's a three to one rate, di uh, weight difference. Yep. yep. It, it's it, it, again, it's just stupid. Yeah. So let's see. G A J H is asking the battery monitor. Does every hit, what do you have a link? Oh, they're probably uh, all the same. Let me take a look. Yeah, I don't know if I can find one. Um, twelve volt battery monitor. 
wrong. I type on ham radio, all I get is bow fangs. What is this? Um, let's see if I can. Oh, there's a million different ones here. Um, let's see if I can find the one that I Oh, here used. we go. Here we go. In fact, this says I purchased in July 2021. Um, I'm going to put this in the chat. Okay. If it works. There we go. Wow. Oh, it failed to post. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I screwed something up here. Um, see if I can uh, find it's I got to search through the one that I bought is currently unavailable, but um, so I the brand is A N K G Alpha November Kilo Golf. It has a 150 amp watt meter power analyzer, which I don't think uh, this thing will handle 150 amp. It's just got number 12 wire on it. Uh, if it does handle 150 amps, it's going to be for like a split second before it goes into meltdown. Yeah. But, um, for 20, yeah. But it's the same thing as the PowerWorks one. 45 Auto's got it right there. It's the exact same thing as the PowerWorks one. It just got a different label on it. There it is. This is the one. This is yeah. one I. Yeah. For That's 14, the one I got too. Fifteen dollars, yeah, fifteen bucks. So, and I just put I just put the link out in the in the chat. Yeah. So, and you can put power poles on it. You can put whatever, whatever. So it's um only one left in right. stock order. Yeah, soon. Your, yeah, yours doesn't <laughs> have power poles on it. The one that I ordered did have them on there. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. And they're all the same. I mean, they're they they all. It's like every six months, there's a new listing with a different name. <laughs> they all come out of the same factory. <laughs> yeah, st standard Amazon um, marketing. You know, yep. put the same thing on there ten times with different made up names. They yeah. don't even make, they don't even make sense. They just mash letters <laughs> together. <laughs> That's Amazon. Hey, at least it ain't Am you. Yeah. <laughs> Alan wants to know if we are talking to through two cans and a string. We, yes, we are. So, <laughs> <laughs> actually, you know, we we have like a we we're on two meters right now with Simplex, <laughs> and we're just, we got little, we got little cootie uh, keyers over here, and we're talking. There about we go. There we go. <laughs> we the old dog code is that great. <laughs> there, uh, the old dog wants to know is why do the Fans go to crap for days afterwards after a contest because all they the use magic up all smoke the, is gone. Yeah, they use up all the propagation. Of course, yeah. it's uh, it's you know there's only there's only so much energy out there, and it's it's gone. That's why. Yeah. And if you believe that, then you believe that solar power is taking away all the solar energy from the sun, and it's going to yeah. go dark. That's yeah. That's why on a on a on a Q, on a contest, you know, at twenty three fifty nine, the switch over to zero hundred Zulu. It's just like, you know, all gone, you know. Because everyone's tired, dude. That's the reason why. <laughs> like, if you've worked at contest all weekend, you're just like, I don't want to look at a radio for a month. Oh, I am done. <laughs> yeah. Ain't that the case. That's the way it is. <laughs> I mean, that's really, a, that's all there is. There's no scientific reason except everyone is just, just burnt out. Yeah. <laughs> all right well you know we're getting to about that time and um it's you make it sound like it's a bad thing well it never goes good <laughs> never goes good <laughs> You should turn the lights down. Oh yeah, light a couple candles. Get my light a couple candles. Day. You know, it's like um, yeah. sort of like um, you know Venus flytrap on WKRP. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh Venus flytrap. Yes, I haven't, oh. I haven't watched WKRP in ages. Oh, I love that show. But it's we're going to be my witness. 
<laughs> I thought that. <laughs> <laughs> turkeys, turkeys could fly. Could fly. <laughs> so ham sexy, and we've got some ham sexy tonight. I found a whole new crop of mobiles. Mobile ham sexy. Mobile ham sexy. Okay. My cover, my cover image here. Thank you for Whoa. the. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, these AI images, it just gets worse and worse every time, guys. I'm surprised there ain't eight wheels on each side. But, <laughs> but I'm, I'm guessing if this is the first picture, this is the first picture. All the other ones that are real are going to be. They're worse. real. They're real. Yeah. Okay. So. So let's go yeah. to the first one. Here. Okay. So we go to the first one. And oh. it's the okay, so yeah, a, it's Prius. It's a Prius. Oh my it's a Prius God. porcupine. Facebook.com slash O9 Prius. Oh, oh my God. Got his own Facebook page. Why don't you just put your Instagram handle on the back there too, buddy? <laughs> I mean, can a Prius run with all that wind drag? Uh, I would think so. Oh, maybe it's, it's not as aerodynamic as it used to be. Uh, you, you look, he's got the he's got the passenger window rolled down so he can get all of the coax through. Wow. <laughs> I think there's a trailer I, I, hitch that, on the back just, too. I, mean, I don't know, like how the electro system can run all that. <laughs> but okay, you do you, buddy. Let's you do you. Goes. So since we're on this Prius uh, kind of vibe here. Oh, 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 forensic sciences. <laughs> sciences. Oh, I'm a doctor. Okay. Um, one, two, three. Four. Okay. I see at least 10 to maybe 12. He's got a lot of hockey pucks on there. He's got a lot of hockey pucks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, and he's a Mason. So yep. you know he's a fine, outstanding young man. Um, yeah, I don't know. But that's a. Is that a Tesla? No, no, it's it's no, just, a Toyota. Uh, no, he's got the he's got that um that oh uh, what's what's that symbol for a medical doctor with the with oh, the space, oh, so. God, staff um oh, yeah the yeah. something cross yeah I don't yeah I doubt this guy's a doctor. Well, forensics. He's a he's he's like he's like doctor yeah. doctor doctor Quincy Quincy you know the the coroner yeah, <laughs> medical sure. examiner. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Jonathan, a handicap Mason. Mason no handicap. Comments. <laughs> no comments. They're going to be hunting yeah. you down tonight. Yeah. Jeez, Louise. So, but you know what? It's June. Yes. Is, June is VHF UHF contest month. So that means. I mean, that's impressive. I'm not. You got to get. Lie. Yeah, you got to get your rovers rolling. I um, mean that that's actually thought out. I mean, he's got like a rack. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's got like a HF antenna in the back with a cap hat. He's yep. got a moxin. It looks like a two meter moxin. That's that. I yeah. Yeah, it's, it's probably two meter moxin. I think it's a six. Maybe. Yeah, it could be I think, six. I think it's like it could be a six. Yeah, actually, it is. No, I think about that's definitely yeah. a six. That's yeah. not because a two meter moxin would be forty two inches. Yeah. Yeah. And looking oh, at the size, of... twenty one on the side. That looks like a six. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks like he's got uh, 23 and 33 centimeter beams under that. Yep. Uh, a couple under. The, okay. And he's even got himself a, a satellite phone antenna. He's got a, a cell boost. Yeah, he's got a cell booster. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even mad. That's actually pretty nice. I got to say, pretty... the props. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I have heart for the rovers, okay? <laughs> oh, oh, wait. Oh, oh. A little Kia here. <laughs> is that a Kia or is that an Isuzu? It could be an Isuzu. I don't it, know, but it looks like it, it reminds me of a Geo Metro, but yeah, it's a little boxy a... for Metro. It, it, yeah, yeah, that's an Isuzu. Oh, like a Trooper? No, it's like one of them. Justy. Yes. Yeah, yes, that's, a, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Oh my lord. <laughs> that's what it is. But he's got. He's. I mean, this guy. This this ain't ham sexy again. Well, this I is. Think this is. Um, it's a Suzuki. I mean, it's a Suzuki. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, there we go. It is a Suzuki. It's not a trooper. You know, I, I've been in a trooper. That's a little too small for a trooper. Yeah, it's. I think it's um, bigger. It's yeah, it's bigger than a the, the trooper's bigger. So yeah, I so think, this I guy think... is working two meter sideband. He could be working EME mobile. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the power supply in there can't be running off that three <laughs> cylinder two stroke. <laughs> It's a 1.9 um, liter. <laughs> point something liter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he could definitely be working like, um, could he be working meteor scan? I mean, yeah. Could, that, yeah, that's, something like that. I, 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 the last two I don't have qualms on, guys. This is, <laughs> again, the ro <laughs> rovers are different from ham sex. The rovers, mode. yeah. Well, it's, um, they're, yeah, they're a breed all their own, that's for yeah. sure. So, and then I okay, saw this one sexy. online. Yeah. This is ham sexy. I bet you the so. backside. I know it's hanging off the hitch. <laughs> even though, even though it's a VK six, we know this is Australia. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him a little. I'm gonna give him a couple points because it is Australia. He could be out in the outback. Mm -hmm. He could be, you know, he needs these for communication, but. Man, there's at least two HF one, two, three, four. one on the front, one on the back. Yeah, yeah, four plus. I think he's got like a CB now in Australia. They also have like a UHF CB. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there could be that too. Um, our, our resident Aussie says, or West Aussie, so it's West a Western, Aussie, okay. Western Australia. <laughs> okay, probably because of six. I mean, you guys are yeah. pretty, pretty strict on the uh number there for where it's at. Kangaroo balls on that <laughs> kangaroo ball. That's what you were trying to say, Joe. <laughs> I didn't I didn't specify which breed, but if it's Aussie, it's probably kangaroo. Could Truck be not that, but probably kangaroo. <laughs> dingo it, my baby. <laughs> <laughs> dingo dingles, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Oh man, oh man. So oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and okay, that let's... that was the last one I found for this month. Oh, but um, oh. we're gonna finish up with another AI image here because who could pass up a wood grain ham sexy micro bus? How, how does AI even come up with this crap? <laughs> like who, what who fed the AI machine marijuana? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's it's just insane. <laughs> well, if you we want to get nothing to worry about, guys, <laughs> trust me. No, I don't. It's a Skynet is not going to assume sentiency anytime soon. <laughs> no, no, they're still drooling in the backyard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want your vehicle roasted on the show, <laughs> send yeah. me an email. <laughs> you know what? Next month, what I want, guys, I want messy shacks. Messy shacks. I mine is, I mean, uh, the full disclosure here, I think Michael's shack is pretty messy. <laughs> I kind of shake my head every time we go down there. Then I come down oh, to yeah. my shack and go, oh, God, mine's worse. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's so much worse. I got, I mean, I, 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 Ham hoarders. That's what I want to see, guy. Ham hoarders. Yeah. What you got? Bring it. <laughs> going to be bad. Oh, Tony says you won't take that car in the outback. <laughs> it's a pavement <laughs> queen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what happens in the outback stays in the outback. And I'm it's not safe. talking about the Subaru. Yeah. I love those old Subaru commercials with um, um, Paul Hogan. So oh. <laughs> the first gen Subies <laughs> out back. Yeah, <laughs> those were the best. <laughs> Anything with Paul Hogan is great. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. So, <laughs> well, the old dog. Hey, we worked. Um, KQ4 MPO. So. Uh, Thanks for the contact. It's glad we are glad I was able to finally get you in the log there. I know you've been coming on to the last few live streams, so but um, we're good. We're good now. That's great. So, uh, forty-five audio. You could have one radio, <laughs> but you could have a lot of crap. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's a reason why the camera only is. Yeah. I just mean, uh, th this back here. Is the most organized of everything. Okay. <laughs> if 
if I moved to one side or the other and you saw what was back behind me on there, it's just a pile of junk. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. So, all right. Um, got a couple. I'm just going to finish up with a couple of questions here. JH says, antenna analyzer, AA35 or AA55, what would be your preference? They're close in price. Um, if I need a, so, um, I think doesn't the, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, the, the way, the way that uh, rig experts got their analyzers laid out, they usually, you know, you buy by the frequency range. So right. the, the big difference between a 35 and a 55 is six meters. You, you had, you had a 55, didn't you? Or did you have yes. a 30? Yeah. I had a 55. Mm -hmm. um, and I like the 55. There's like it's a 55 zoom or whatever it is now. I think yeah. they moved past the zoom. There's a new model, um, mm -hmm. but the 55 is great. It'll get you six meters through 160, mm -hmm. right? So spend the extra. I, I don't know what the difference in price is, but you might as well just spend and get the six. The only thing that you don't have is VHF UHF. But so he's got a nano. He's got a nano VNA for that. Right, so right. So and, like now, now I have your old 1000. Yeah. Um, because you were 600, I think. 600, was, like, because, because I got a, I got a 2,000, so. Right. But mm -hmm. I still have a separate bird UHF VHF um, that I sometimes use for uh, 2 meter 440. Yep. Um, yep. But, yeah, if you can get the 55, get the 55. Just, you know, because what will happen was then you one day you'll want to do 6 meters, and then you'll be like, oh, I don't have it. Right? <laughs> and regardless of what the, v, the nano VNA does, um, I'd rather just have an antenna analyzer, even yeah. though the nano VNA gives you a lot more information and it's cheaper. I'd rather just have the analyzer. I like the ability that uh, with the analyzers, like the rig expert, it's just that the ease of use is is exactly. it's just right there, and it's you don't have field, to calibrate them either. No, yeah, yeah. So and and you can and with the with the newer models, I. Uh, you know they they work with the um, Antscope software, so you can save a scan and manipulate it. You know, back yep. on the on on your on your on your desktop PC yeah. or something they, like that. They tell you much more than what a Smith chart is going to give you. Oh, they yep. tell you what you need versus what a Smith chart will give you. Yeah. So. Yep. Absolutely. And um, if you go with the actually the stick models, they got the built-in Bluetooth, so they'll interface with your smartphone. You can put the analyzer at the feed point. You can step away 20, 30 feet mm -hmm. and use the Bluetooth to, to manipulate it, which is really mm -hmm. cool too. Yep. So, you know, if you don't, if you want to eliminate the vagaries of coax, you've got that, you've, you've, yeah. you know, that's, that's kind of a neat, uh, sort of a neat thing. So, uh, all right. Uh, D Heller says, why does SWR seem to go up when power is increased using an amplifier? It's Dude. not that it's not that the SWR well the SWR always was there. You don't notice it because of the precision of your meter. So, right. you know, when you you know you do your you do your tuning tune up at a low power mm -hmm. and um then and then and then when you put the high, then when you put kick the amp in, you'll see you'll see an increase. Most likely, it's because it's just that a lot of times it's just the precision of the meter at that lower power level wasn't able to. Mm -hmm. um, to yeah, be it's accurate. magnified tenfold when you when yeah you power up. So yep, yep. So at least that's that's what I what I always I always felt felt that it is. It's not necessarily. Um, the the you know that there's something kind of strange happening right. in the background but it's it's most yeah you're just magnifying things with that with that power level so okay uh and then dr jonathan here um says uh looking to get a battery for emergency backup that's primary purpose for possible poda um you know we just talked uh, you must have tuned in late because we just talked about batteries about 20 minutes ago <laughs> you might want to might want to rewind um, about 20, 25 minutes. Yep. Um, or wait a few weeks so we cut that one on issue. And, and, and cut and cut it. Yeah, but um, um, that's probably the best the best thing to, to, to do there is to yeah, just mm -hmm. back up back up the stream about a half hour and um, yep. you can hear our discussion about batteries. Long and story the, short, though, uh, if you're at home mm -hmm. for emergency purposes, bigger is better. 
Yep. Right. I mean, I would. I mean, if it's really for backup, and you're really like thinking, you know, like what if the power's out for twelve hours, then at least a hundred amp hour. I would go a hundred. I would go a hundred yeah. in that in that regard. It's uh, absolutely yeah. if you don't yeah. have to heft it around. But if you're yeah. looking for portable, you know, twenty yeah. or you know either a twenty, thirty, or a fifty amp hour, depending on what you're most. A hundred amp hearing. hour lithium ion phosphate battery is still fairly hefty. It's yeah. not a hundred pounds, but it's fairly hefty. That's yeah. It's an it's enough to know it's there. Yeah. So. so, all right, and we got the we got the ape in the house. So good hey, evening. Go. Yeah. So good to good to see you. Just wow. there we go. just what just when we're getting ready to close her down, but yeah, a little late to the party there, right? But never late to the party. <laughs> well, team replay means you can always watch the stream over again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks a lot, everybody. Um, Let's see. Uh, oh, William says here, what are we going to do for ba about bandpass filters for the Porta Campout? Bring your filters um, because you're probably going to want them. BYOF. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll have I'll have a set. I usually run, you know, in, in events like that, I'll, I'll probably run bandpass filters and I got a 20, a 40, and a 15. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll look, uh, I'll look online the spotting pages to see where other people are active and um, pick a different band or frequency to kind of kind of stay away from that mess but um hey yeah you're yeah, running so. the show you pick the frequency first how about that <laughs> i might have to do a couple of videos on building bandpass filters so it's mm -hmm. um get your yeah get get your own you know if you don't want to buy them you can you can make them they're not that it's not the worst right. thing in the world so uh, scout's just gonna yeah he's gonna wander off into the woods there you go yeah. you know get, a, get away from you go out there yeah, get away from the noise. I like that. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it really isn't anywhere to wander when we go out to uh, this the island. You have to wander back onto the mainland. <laughs> Dick, you can bring your bring your kayak. There's a lot of nice. There's a lot of little coves that you can you can kind of kayak there back into. So, yeah. So you got you got all that. Well, we should we'll talk more about the camp out next month uh, because it's that'll be about. Um, Five Plus months away, months. then yeah, at that. There we go. Five, 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 six months away, and we'll be talking probably, about Hamvention next. A whole entire, a whole entire campsite now. By now. Oh, it's uh, it's it's all us. <laughs> it literally is all us. <laughs> and next month we'll be talking about Hamvention, of course, and mm -hmm. um, other things. You know, it's camping season starting, so. Um, we got all of that. We got all of that going on. So, but um, next live stream will be Thursday, May second. So. Um, be ready, be ready for that. Uh, uh, it should be a, uh, as always, it's a, it should be a good time. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it as always. So, um, hopefully it'll be warmer weather. It's I'm, I'm looking forward to the warm. That's for sure. It's yeah. um, I'm done. I'm done with winter and done with all this snow. So it's, um, Amen. We, can, we can be, you know, we can, the leaves can sprout on the tree anytime now. So. <laughs> well, thanks Jesus a lot, everybody. Proud for, on the what? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> proud on the what? Thanks a lot, everybody, for tuning in. It's been a pleasure hanging with you for the last hour and a half. But um, well, um, it's time to pack her up and uh, say goodbye for another month. So, hi, Michael, KB9 VBR, and I'm Joe, KD9 CJX. You have a yeah, you have a great evening, seven three.